hello everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to the lightning talk. Uh, my name is Salman Iqbal. And I'm going to be talking about can a robot code my website? My Twitter is Salman Iqbal. Um, I couldn't get Salman Iqbal. It was taken, so I just went with Salman. I don't know how to sing, but you know that's that's where we are. So so that's me, Salman Iqbal. I I'm going to be starting my new job as a tech lead on Monday at Office for National Statistics. So at the moment, I'm unemployed because I left my job on Friday, just for this week. And I also started uh, uh, Cloud Native Wales it's a community, which Lewis is going to talk about in the, in the next talk. Um, before, before I start, I just want to see uh, maybe a show of hands as to how many people in the past or currently have created your own website or another website or an app for that matter. If you have, just put your hands up. Yeah, so I'm guessing pretty much 90% of the people. And the other 10% probably did too, but it's a bit early to put your hands up. So, um, so how does it actually start? So sometimes, you know, you, maybe you'll get a mock-up or something like this. So maybe a designer would make a mock-up and you'd expect to uh, create a website. Or you would come up with a mock-up and then you'd create a website. Which is, I've just taken this from the previous uh, job that I was doing. So this is, we, we used to create a pensions portal. And this is what a pensions portal needs to look like. You know, there's a bit of an expectation of what, this website needs to look like. When it comes to me, so I'm going to do some dev, I'll do the back end, maybe we'll do the database, same for you, and then eventually, uh, in reality, it actually ends up looking something like this, which is a bit of a joke, and it's not really, I mean, it's there, um, it doesn't really meet the expectations that were set before. It does the job, I mean, you know, you, you're displaying the information, but it's, it's not great, uh, like the designer is not happy because they gave you a a mock-up that you they thought you will stick to. And people start asking you questions. Why Why didn't you not spend time? And they say, how do you even code? And then I'm like, yeah, maybe I just code like this. This kind of reminds me of what we see here, right? So <laughs> in a commercial, like if, you, if you're going to pick, uh, like buy a burger or anything like this, uh, you see it in a commercial, it looks great. But in reality, you, you like, it will, I mean, it will do the job, right? It will fill you up. You'll eat it. but. It's all right, if, if, if the burger artisan had more time, they'd probably make it look like what you see on your left. So, uh, I, I, I love this quote. Uh, I've seen this quote, uh, I've heard this quote before. It says, I, you know, I don't want mediocrity, I want best of the best. I think it came from somebody on The Apprentice um, or the Love Island or whatever, you know, whatever's running. So, that's what this is. So, um, I'm not gonna bring a robot out at the moment to see if it can help us out. Um, because it's a lightning talk, a lot can go wrong. But what we will talk about really quickly is, uh, is deep learning. Um, you've definitely heard of it uh, in machine learning, deep learning. What really deep learning is, is, uh, is, is a software that mimics deep learning is what it's trying to do is mimic what's happening in the neurocortex of the brain based on the neurons and how they're wired up together. You know, the wrinkly bit where all the thinking happens, the 80% of the brain. Um, I've just taken this definition from uh, MIT Tech Review. I've just modified it slightly, but basically that's what the software is trying to do. You give it some patterns like images or stuff like this, and it will try and learn from those patterns to what needs, what needs to happen. So uh, if you're wondering what deep uh, uh, learning is, uh, you might have seen a neural network. Uh, a simple neural network looks like this. In our brain, we've got neurons, and they're all wired together. You have an input layer, and then you have a hidden layer in the bit, in, in the middle, and then you have the uh, and then you have the output layer. Basically, what's happening is is learning the patterns, and then eventually firing or not firing based on what the patterns are. Um, deep learning is built up on the same thing. The only thing is you've got a, a number of hidden layers in the middle. Uh, that's what deep learning is. Uh, stuff like convolutional neural networks, long short long short-term memory networks, anything that has a, a ton of hidden layers in between, so a number of neurons is deep learning uh, neural networks. So uh, what I'm going to present to you is this paper. So if one, there's one thing you would take away from this talk is definitely go and have a read of this paper. So the point is, can we create a graphical user interface code, so let's say HTML or CSS for your website from a given mock-up? So this paper was... Uh, uh, released in uh, 2017. Um, you might have seen some work by Airbnb on sketch to code. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, but the point is uh, in pix to code I've, I've taken this diagram, just going to briefly explain what the architecture is, what it tries to do, and then we'll match up with what you might have seen before. 
So uh, this is for all machine learning or deep learning algorithms. You usually have a training, uh, training part and then you have the sampling part. So in the training part, we take a, a, a mock-up of what the application needs to look like and we give it a context. In this context, we're talking about HTML and CSS. It could be any other context, like an Android app, uh, what the code looks like there. And then we pass it through CNN, convolutional neural networks. They are very good at uh, recognizing images, uh, things in the images. So that's that's why that that's where that's used. Uh, long short long short term memory networks are used at like text prediction stuff like this and uh, looking at like predicting what's going to happen to the stock market. So you can see we're taking images and we're taking textual information and you know we train it over time then you've got softmax over there which is just like a, a triggering function and in the end it produces you a, a, a domain specific language token and then what you do is when your algorithm is trained you pass it into that code and it eventually compiles you and gives you the code out you might have seen this in uh, stuff like this you give an image to whatever it might be and it will uh, an algorithm and it will or, or a bot on Twitter you can follow these bots and it will try and describe what an image is doing and that's pretty much the same as what not pretty much the same that's what the this pix to code stuff is built up on it uses convolutional neural network to train on the images and it also uses LSTM networks to train on on what the context of that image is so basically it's kind of, it's it's very interesting uh, based on what we've been seeing in the past, because this is not new, we've seen it in the past quite a lot, uh, new things can, uh, new things, people are working on new things. So uh, definitely, if you can, check out this uh, blog post by Emil Wallner. Um, Emil Wallner goes through this paper, so he's taken this paper, uh, it's written in Python and uh, uh, TensorFlow, um, and you can actually run this code yourself to see, uh, see what it does. So I've basically built up on this and taken some parts of it in ml.net. Uh, we'll just, uh, how many people here have heard of ml.net? Put your, put your hands up. Okay, great, yeah. Like uh, maybe a half of you. ml.net is an open source uh, C-sharp machine learning library. Um, this is what the pipeline uh, looks like. There's a talk tomorrow uh, on ml.net. Uh, I completely forgot uh, what slot it is, but just have, have a look. If you're interested in machine learning in C-sharp or F-sharp, Definitely go to that talk. Uh, what was that, sorry? There you go, three o'clock. Um, so basically, you this is this is you put the structure in and then you predict it out. Uh, this uh, ML .net is still in preview, so the only bit that I've written at the moment so far is the prediction bit because I can take the Python model that's been trained previously and actually do it here. And uh, uh, I'm going to hopefully write a blog quite soon, which will try and do the whole uh, input to output. Uh, I've put in a proposal to uh, present that at uh, NDC Minnesota. So if you're at the in the NDC uh, committee, just give me uh, <laughs> hit me up. Let's see if we can get that working. So I'm uh, just uh, just going to quickly go through a a, a mock-up. So this is a mock-up. That's what we want uh, the website to look like. And I'll show you what the website actually looks like if you run it through this algorithm. So that's the mock-up. Uh, I'm not sure what's happened here. I think, can we get the screen? Do I have to be in present mode? Do I have to be in present mode? I just need to show this. That's all right, doesn't matter. No, I'm just on the same one. That's all right, let me just put this up. So, uh, I mean, we can train uh, algorithms to write your website, but we can't uh, get a screen to show from an HDMI cable onto this. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where we are. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put the website up uh, later on. Uh, what, what it actually looks like, it looks pretty much similar to this. It works out, uh, works out the code blocks. The only thing that it can't figure out is these images. You know, it works out what's a link. It figures out the link. Actually, pretty see the code. What you can't figure out is these images, only because the algorithm wasn't trained on any examples that had images on. So it didn't really know what to do with the images, so it left a blank space. Apart from that, everything uh, was there. Uh, so there's more examples. I've just, like, there's an original on the left. This is from the Emma Walner's blog as well. Uh, they've, you've got original on the left, and then the prediction is pretty much 
spot on. You can check like the buttons look like buttons and everything else too. So the question is, right? That's, that's why we all came. Can a robot code my website? The answer is yes. Yes, but really depends on the training set, right? So if you don't train it correctly, imagine if you take the code that I wrote for my website and uh, just train it on that, like the outcome is not gonna be that pretty in, in the code itself. So you really need to pick uh, the right training set to be able to get uh, a good uh, solution. Uh, but you can think, think about the possibilities, right? So you can do, right now, uh, you can do it on HTML and CSS, the algorithm that runs. Uh, I'll put it up on Twitter later on. But imagine if you train it on something like uh, a JavaScript, right? So all the JavaScript functions, all, this, uh, all the transitions, it can figure it out. What about, why not C-sharp codes? Perhaps you can write some C-sharp code, maybe backend logic. So um, that's where we are. I'm just gonna quickly plug Cloud Native Wales. Lewis is gonna give a bigger uh, talk on that, but we run a meetup in, in, in Cardiff uh, to do with Cloud Native. Uh, it'll be great if you can come and speak there, or it'll be even better if you sponsor us for doing it. Um, so that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, that's my Twitter. Please uh, uh, get in touch. I'm around for the, all three days if you have any questions. Uh, so thank you very much.